Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, October 31st, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, election fraud exposed. Bev Harris has just released a new report, Fractional Magic, breaking down how black box voting is being used to fix election results. That is dangerous. Because when you try to sow the seeds of doubt in people's minds about the legitimacy of our elections, that undermines our democracy. Then this. Newly leaked emails condemn Donna Brazil as a liar and a fraud, giving debate questions to Hillary before the debate, even though she denied it. Also, is the Clinton campaign collapsing before our eyes? New WikiLeaks and the latest polls show Clinton is trending down and fast. And then, Halloween, a new exercise in political correctness? All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, the definitive evidence of how America's elections are hacked has arrived. The missing link has been discovered. Now, this is exposed by Black Box Voting, which was founded in 2003. They're a nonpartisan investigative group that does reporting on elections in an attempt to stop vote rigging. So they have found the source code written within these electronic voting machines. They're there to rig the election from the start. The way this works is they, they skim the votes by dealing in percentages. They round up in percentages and they use hidden decimal points. Now, vote fraud expert Bev Harris joined the Alex Jones show today, breaking this all down. I mean, this is bombshell. The full report is up on Infowars.com, but here's an excerpt. If you start doing things like I'm going to do every third vote or I'm going to add 100 votes here, you're going to get, you're not going to be very precise. Instead, you need to do what in finance they call an allocation. You say, whatever number of people show up, the guy is going to get X percent of those votes, whatever they are. Now, think about this. If you have 100 votes and you say, my guy's going to get 43%, that's 43 votes. But if you have 99 people show up, what's going to happen? You're going to end up with 42 point something, something, something votes. So if your system is not capable of counting votes with decimals, it can't do that allocation. And what, so what he did was he knew that that's how it would have to be done, and it would have to be very specific down to the precinct level. The databases can be configured any way you want, and they should be configured and used to be configured to count each vote as a whole number. It's called counting it as an integer. He went in and looked and said, let me see. It should count it as a whole integer. They had changed the setting in all of the voting machines in America. Uh, now, this is the master computers. This is not the machines out in the precincts. This is the master computers that control all the voting machines. Bev, Bev this is incredible. And, and again, time and time again, you and your researchers tirelessly around the country have exposed the different ways they're doing it. And so I guess as a you know, top you know, fraud investigator, you're able to reverse engineer, okay, if we are going to steal it, how will we do it? Let's look for this. And then sure enough, you've, you know, you've caught them dialing in remotely. You've caught amazing. them. Yeah. You know, with you, in other words, anybody can sit there and go, well, this looks like a vulnerability, theoretically. This is not a theory. This is real. This is something that was put into the system. They actually changed the setting. We can actually go back and figure out now that we know it exactly the date that the setting was changed and that it migrated to all the other manufacturers in the U.S. So now at this point, the setting is in there to be able to allocate votes by percent. To, in, in basically 99% of the votes in the U.S. And then he went on and he, he basically proved it. He said, now that I know that's in there, I think I can allocate the votes. And it is stunning when you see the demo. It's Let's be clear. Let's be clear. You're, you're finding this in the voting software. You go in. It's this algorithm or system to be able to basically program it to show the outcome you want. By shaving votes, I mean, in, in a lay person uh, uh, who's not a you know expert like you or a top uh, computer programmer, what's happening? So there's this one central computer, which at the end of the day, all the votes come to it. That's where you take it. You don't run around to five thousand different things in precincts. You wait till the votes come to you, and then you have your way with them. And uh, it's very, very precise. Uh, it's invisible. And uh, there's absolutely, it doesn't matter whether the system's on the internet or not. None of the stuff that they say is a protection matters at all. Y you have your way with them. Um, then you, 
once you control the votes in whatever way you want for whatever target you want, this can be done by one or a couple of people across whole jurisdictions. I actually um, didn't want to write the story unless I was absolutely sure. So not only did I see him do it, but I had him show me how it was done. And uh, I took some vote databases, real vote databases that I have. One of them was the entire state of Alaska, the vote database from the 2004 election. I was able to change every precinct in, in the state of Alaska in four seconds. Is it not clear that Hillary and the media are trying to sell the idea that there is an election fraud and that Trump's going to lose by a landslide when the polls and everything else show something opposite? Let me put it this way. Uh, of course, things have been very surprising of late. But if she is still viable in any way, whether or not she wins, she will win. Now, for the full report, go to Infowars.com. We've got an article up right now that has embedded Alex Jones is uh, breaking down all the information that Bev Harris provided on the show today. As well, we have her mini documentary exposing uh, this voter fraud and how the elections can be rigged by a Soros connected company. This is a George Soros company we've been telling you about. A Smartmatic, they're not officially recognized by the Commission on Elections. But for some reason, they're using these machines in a lot of the swing states there. So this is key information. This is the smoking gun. This is bombshell. You need to share that report with everyone on all of your social media accounts. Get the word out before people get out there and vote. Obama tries to say that the elections aren't rigged. What does that even mean? Well, here's what it means. And Bev Harris breaks it down with black box voting of exactly how that can be done. It's not a conspiracy theory anymore. There's facts there. It's a conspiracy. Now, here's some another conspiracy. We've told you about this, how Twitter will use their al algorithms to suppress any negative attention going out to Hillary Clinton or the Democrats. Really, well, success. Hillary for prison is trending on Twitter. I repeat, Hillary for prison trending on Twitter after the FBI announced that they were going to be reopening the Clinton investigation. And this their their algorithm was bypassed thanks to some creative patriots who did a little misspelling there on the ta on the tag and that was how they were able to break through the censorship they just added one extra i and so that small change worked because as soon as they kind of tweaked it a little it vaulted to the top of twitter's trending section reaching over 40,000 tweets of course you reach out to twitter and they they had no comment on their whole algorithms and the way they work but We've exposed this before. They're obviously compromised. But you might have your wish for Hillary for prison. If she is charged with obstruction of justice, she could go to prison for 20 years. Now, Michael Snyder covers this on the Economic Collapse blog. He says really no one's talking about uh, this obstruction of justice. A lot of people are just talk focusing on the fact that the investigation is into the mishandling of classified information, uh, classified documents. But if the FBI discovers that Clinton altered, destroyed, or concealed any emails that should have been turned over to the FBI during this original investigation, she could be charged with obstruction of justice if found guilty. Obviously, her political career would be immediately ended, but could send her to prison for the rest of her life. So there you go. The hammer is coming down on Hillary Clinton. And in fact, that's what a lot of pollsters are saying as well, that this could be it. This could be it for her. Uh, the latest Rasmussen poll says 40 percent of Clinton leading voters say that they could change their minds. Now, this poll was partly conducted after the FBI's announcement on Friday. And so this is showing that even a lot of people who were thinking they were going to vote for for Hillary Clinton aren't sure now. Eighty six percent of Americans are now sure of who how they will vote. Forty percent of Hillary Clinton's supporters remain unconvinced though so and then another pollster this is a former jimmy carter pollster pat cadell he says the dam is about to break on hillary and voters are abandoning the establishment candidate in droves i mean how many scandals can happen to this woman before her her supporters jump ship um pat cadell says she's hemorrhaging support as a result of this fbi announcement and he likens this particular election uh, to the 1980 presidential race, which was close right up until the final days before the electorate abandoned Carter and rallied around the anti-establishment candidate. Uh, Cattell was talking about how Carter's entire campaign was built around portraying Ronald Reagan as an unqualified and dangerous candidate, similar to how Clinton has been portraying Trump. Uh, but the reason 
that the polling between Reagan and Carter was close up until the final weekend when the dam broke and Reagan shot ahead by 10 points. And he seems to think that this latest announcement by the FBI could be the dam breaking for Hillary Clinton. And we'll have to see as those polls come out. Not that they really mean anything because we've seen CNN and others skewing the polls on purpose, but we'll, we'll see. That's why we definitely need a landslide at the voting booth. Now, a former assistant director of the FBI says the Clintons are a crime fam family, and he would know because this is James Callstrom, and he was actually assistant director of the FBI in charge of the New York office during the 90s. So he, you know, tracked down a bunch of mobsters and swindlers and crime families for years. So he says the Clintons, that's a crime family, basically. It's like organized crime. I mean, the Clinton Foundation is a cesspool. God forbid we put someone like that in the White House. So this is a former FBI, assistant FBI director, 27 years. Uh, he's a veteran of the FBI. And this is what he thinks about Hillary Clinton and her Clinton Foundation. Totally scandalous which is why we're probably seeing a mutiny within the FBI, which is probably what has caused uh, James Comey to come out and, and try to get ahead of the scandals breaking because we're hearing rumblings. People within the, uh, within the FBI were very discouraged with James Comey's decision to not pursue charges. And they also said that based on um, Assange and even Kim.com saying that they were going to release Hillary Clinton's emails they wanted to kind of get ahead of this story uh, before it got too bad. They kind of forced James Comey's hand because obviously if Assange or Kim.com uh, released any bombshell emails from Hillary Clinton, this would completely erode uh, the trust in the system if it isn't already. But now there's a new report about the Department of Justice repeatedly trying to kill the FBI's investigation into the Clinton Foundation. Uh, so these are senior level Justice Department officials. They push back heavily on an ongoing FBI investigation of the Clinton Foundation. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. Um, they laid out numerous examples uh, based on law enforcement sources of how these DOJ officials intervened. Um, now, you'll recall the CNN said, oh, they tabled that investigation. The Clinton Foundation is perfectly squeaky clean. But in fact, that is not true. And this uh, report by the Daily Caller is pointing out how they were reporting in August uh, that the, the FBI and several U.S. attorney's offices were conducting an unorthodox joint investigation into the Clinton Foundation. And a lot of those senior level officials were really, really ticked that they would dare go behind the back of the Department of Justice and continue on with their investigation, even though they tried to stymie it. Now, these are prosecutors with the U.S. attorney's office in the Eastern District of New York. This is where Loretta Lynch led before taking over as the attorney general last year. They, they refused to allow FBI investigators from probing the Clinton family charity to review emails found on the dev devices that were turned over this year by two of Clinton's lawyers. This was during a separate investigation into the mishandling of classified information. So they, they were saying that the rationale there was that these devices were covered by partial immunity and limited use agreements that the Clinton lawyers agreed to with the DOJ. And now there's also reports that Cheryl Mills, half the reason why she... Uh, offered to become Hillary Clinton's counsel is because then that would grant her that attorney client privilege. I mean, just total corruption covering up for one another in every single way. And now we see the Department of Justice repeatedly trying to kill the FBI investigation. Of course, we see Loretta Lynch meeting on the plane with Bill Clinton uh, secretly there on the tarmac for about a half an hour. And then just a few days later, the FBI abruptly says nothing to see here. Hillary Clinton, totally innocent. But apparently there were a lot of uh, people within the FBI who were really upset with James Comey for making that decision. A lot of pushback occurring. And now what they're saying, of course, is that these emails that they found on a device shared by Huma Abedin and her husband, Anthony Weiner, are what is causing uh, James Comey to now speak out just days before the election. Well, Kit Daniels has a story up. I mean, this is just to underscore how not good these people are for the national security of this country. Hackers likely stole Hillary Clinton's classified documents that were kept on Huma Abedin's uh, email account. 500 million Yahoo users were hacked in 2014. Huma Abedin used her real name as her username. So any state-sponsored hackers would be interested in what she had to share.
Well, former prosecutor in DOJ had Loretta Lynch. She can't handle any questions asked of her. She's pleading the fifth regarding the president's cash payment to Iran. This is uh, coming after Senator Marco Rubio and uh, Representative Mike Pompeo earlier this month asked her a few questions about the details of this cash payment. And according to the Assistant Attorney General Peter Kadzik, the refusal to answer is met uh, with this inability to disclose any information regarding this Iran deal. So what we see is the DOJ had pleading the fifth to avoid prosecution herself regarding this, this deal because we know that the president giving cash to Iran and what he did, it's potentially illegal. Now, in this specific case, um, the Congress, they're addressing the national security issue and this was what the lawmakers had to say about it. Your staff failed to address any of our questions and instead provided a copy of public testimony and a lecture about the sensitivity of information associated with the issue. Now, as the U.S. Uh, Chief law enforcement officer, it's outrageous that you would essentially plead the fifth and refuse to respond to our inquiries. The actions of your department came at a time when Iran continues to hold Americans hostage and unjustly sentencing them to prison. Now, he makes an excellent point. You know, this is a national security issue, and we as Americans have a right to know what our own Department of Justice is up to, as well as our president. Are they making ransom payments for Americans? Are they just giving gifts for something that they're calling reparations? for a deal gone bad. What are they up to? We have a right to know. She doesn't have a right to recuse herself and then step back in whenever she wants to just to avoid criminal prosecution. This is an outrage. Trump says we need to drain the swamp. And this swamp creature has been doing this, these sort of crony moves for about three decades, and it's time to go. We'll check out this article. It's up on our website, Infowars.com. While you're at it, be sure to download our app, Infowars.com forward slash app. I'm Margaret Howe reporting for Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here on the road filing this breaking news alert to YouTube, Facebook, and Infowars.com. Now, on Friday, when the announcement that Comey was going to reopen the criminal investigation on the Clinton uh, email scandal, I called a few of my sources and they said, yes, the word is that there are major movements towards indictment against Hillary sometime after the election, but they don't want to make it look political, so it's got to come after the election. But the issue isn't whatever's in this Wiener email with the sexting of the 15-year-old girl, reportedly. It's what's already come out in WikiLeaks last week, the smoking gun, where she's covering up emails to Obama, and Obama's been caught lying about it. Now, I've talked to a bunch of sources, including high-level federal, beyond the FBI, beyond the federal marshals, you name it. And they said, listen, the major trigger we've been looking for, the Islamicist, a new war with Russia, economic collapse, Black Lives Matter, that's all just side issues. The election itself is what is going to blow sky high. That's what they're intending to basically put into question regardless. And then you've got the Black Lives Matter and all the rest of it and the destabilization set up. Clearly, Trump is way ahead. That's what internal polls show. They're adding nine to 40 something points into Hillary polls. Uh, that's admitted, uh, and she's still now behind. So, this is just giant. And so, bottom line, they had to focus in on this side issue to make it look like Comey wasn't you know, basically still covering for Hillary, but it's a diversionary issue. And that's why she's saying, hurry up and release them. And Trump, the message of Trump is a warning. Sure, call for these to be released, but call for all of them to be released and say, this is a woman that took sledgehammers hammers, to all these phones, but now she wants this released. What does she have to hide before, and now what does she know is in this one device? This could be a setup to distract the last eight, nine days, we're about eight and a half days out from November 8th, to distract from all the new WikiLeaks that are coming out, all the WikiLeaks that have already come out, but more importantly, and this is the key, the trigger for a contested election, voter fraud. There are precincts in Philadelphia, PA, where you've got 140 to 120 percent of the voters voting. Impossible. Total election fraud from Ohio to Pennsylvania to Florida, from Virginia to Texas to Illinois. It's all coming out on Hillary's side. It's all confirmed. They're denying, 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 denying over and over again. So that's the bottom line. We've got to stay focused on what was already in WikiLeaks. It's totally damning. 
they should all go to jail. They're trying to get the public off that. They're so desperate. If the media picks it up, it's over. They're going to have to prosecute them. So they're diverting off onto Wiener's phone while they try to steal the election. And then they hope by Friday or Saturday of next week, you know, we're talking in six days, two days out from the election, they intend to then say, okay, here's the emails, and it's no big deal. And then say, see, all this is a smokescreen, all this is no big deal, the emails are a fraud, let's quit talking about them. And now they're two days out, they've been stealing the early vote. That's what they're trying to position. The problem is there's such a landslide for Trump in early voting that they want to be able to say that she was going to be way ahead in early voting. That was their pitch in the New York Times and other places, but instead he's ahead in early voting. So they're in total, complete meltdown panic mode. I'll be on the radio today, 4 to 6 p.m., Infowars.com, Central Time, with heavy hitters on with the inside baseball. And I've called my other sources who have big sources in the federal government as well. I don't just have sources. I have other obvious sources. I mean... We have some of the biggest sources out there. Uh, Matt Drudge is not my source on this, obviously. Remember, Matt Drudge came exclusively a year ago and had met with a Supreme Court justice who said their plan to take the free speech and basically overthrow the country by the end of 2016. Well, I separately have sources right into those sources. And it's, 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 it's the same thing. So this is so hardcore. This is so historic, folks. This is over the top. Uh, Kim.com has been proving to be very credible. He's got a lot of the same intel. He's going to be coming on the show, hopefully this week. I know he's talked to David Knight uh, about his intel, that they've already got the 33,000 emails. Obviously, the NSA has them. William Benny's confirmed that. We've interviewed him in studio, former technical director of the NSA. They're all coming on this week. We're going to really get on top of this, folks. This, this is so historic. Infowars.com forward slash show. I'm Alex Jones signing off. Now is the time for the maximum effort to expose election fraud and what's going on and the current WikiLeaks and the new ones about to come out because WikiLeaks does have at least part of 33,000 deleted emails. They're getting ready to drop them. That's why they're so scared. That's why they're trying to suck all the oxygen out of the room with this other report right now. This is history happening. They want us focused on Anthony Weiner's Weiner, literally. Just like when the Clintons were selling missile secrets to China and flying cocaine into Mena, Arkansas, we were focused on the cigars and, and Monica, which is fine, and the blue dress, that's fine. But we need to get focused on what they're distracting us from. Infowars.com forward slash show. The people are taking action. We've gone from having three or four million people a day listening to five, six million a day. It's so huge. Keep spreading the links. It's having a huge effect. But all of the independent media is exploding right now because you're taking action. You are the resistance. God bless you. Now let's kick some globalist ass politically. And if they think they're going to try to have some civil war in this country, let's be prepared and positioned in defensive measures to restore the republic one way or another if they get physical to defend ourselves. This is a Maximum Red Alert. Infowars.com. Clinton is a rapist. Well, I'm Margaret Hell reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm here on the University of Texas Austin campus to ask students how they feel about the university issuing an edict, an 11 costume type ban. This is Halloween costumes I'm talking about. They've banned 11 types of costumes that they find culturally offensive, among them cowboys and Indians, anything with a fiesta theme, things like that. Now they've also set up a diversity police that allows students to snitch on their fellow students in the event that they see somebody violating one of these costume bans. I'm going to be asking these students exactly what they think about this. What do you think about the school's ban of certain Halloween costumes, 11 that they think are harmful, like Pocahontas, Cowboys and Indians, anything Fiesta wear? Uh, that's sad because, um, I mean, if you don't have any problem with that, it, it is not offensive. If, if the school wants to ban things, they have the right to. I mean, I see why I, I see why it's offensive, like, given the history of everything. But at the same time, like, I feel like you could say, the whole thing is, like, my culture is not a costume, but I guess you could, anything is a costume, really. Dressing up like Pocahontas, you think you should be, like, ratted on for that? Um, I don't think so. I think it's perfectly fine. Are you Scottish? No, not actually. Are you making fun <laughs> of Scots? No, I hadn't thought so. They might think so. I don't really seem to think that it's offensive. I can understand why other costumes might be offensive. I think it's fine to wear whatever they want. Someone can write and wear whatever they want because it's themselves. I feel like if you can celebrate the culture, I feel like if you're actually appreciating it, I don't think if you're, if you're making fun of it, I mean, that's something else. 
I think they shouldn't ban it. I think that we should be able to, to dress however we want here. But I mean, if you do get offended, if they're actually offended. I mean, I guess there should be a place that we can report that, I guess. I, I think that it's really sad that the university, which really should be for diversity and of, should be a diversity of ideas also, and instead of trying to make everyone think exactly the same way. Like if I get offended by your ears, I could report you? I mean, you could. I probably wouldn't like you afterwards, but I mean, <laughs> something else. <laughs> well, as you can see, the students that we talked to didn't seem to mind that their school was imposing this arbitrary ban or that they'd set up a diversity police office so that other st students could snitch on the ones that they thought were offensive. Nobody seemed to mind except for an easily offended sensitive view. I'm Margaret reporting for Infowars.com. Reporting for Infowars.com. We are here in downtown Cleveland where Bill Clinton is holding an event today. As you can see, they couldn't have picked a smaller place to hold a rally. This is literally like a hallway in the middle of a bunch of rooms. So very interesting to see. And you can kind of guess why they might have done this. The turnout is small and they might have been feeling that they were going to get a small turnout after the news broke that they are in fact reopening the case on Hillary Clinton because more evidence has been found. The crowd does not look very enthusiastic. As you can see, we've noticed that there were some Clinton staffers that looked like they were actually panicking and trying to figure out ways to fill in the crowd or send out some of their backstage um, campaign volunteers and you know put them into the crowd but it does not look very good there you have it for the enthusiasm Enthusiasm failed attempt number two. Enthusiasm fail attempt number three. Some travel across the city, across the state, across the country, and some have even left their country. I see you out there. Just to come volunteer to get Hillary Clinton elected. You will be amazed at what we can do if you take the time to knock on 30 doors. How many people are going to actually make sure they're putting their feet to the ground and getting to the work? Doing the work. Hold on, hold on now. How many of you have actually voted? Raise your hand. All right, we got a little bit more hands. All right, thank you so much because we know those are folks in the bank. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome President Bill Clinton to the stage. But what we really need is comprehensive mental health. She released a plan to establish serious community mental health treatments in every place in America. These are things that will change your life. So will free tuition for families with incomes of our $125,000. So will debt-free graduation for everybody else. If you're any kind of public service work, a teacher, a police officer, a fire, whether it's important, mental health, or drug treatment, or social work, after 10 years, the rest of your debt's forgiven, it's not paid off. These things will change the 
We just saw Bill Clinton give a speech to a rather small crowd here in this building in what appears to be a middle of a hallway, a very small area, and the crowd was very unenthusiastic. Do you think that this recent, you know, the FBI reopening their investigation on Hillary Clinton is going to affect her her campaign and the election results? That's what I asked him, and I, he said absolutely not. He said they have nothing to do with her, and that's why she wants it taken out, out in the open so that people can see for themselves. It could hurt the campaign, but from what I've read, there's no there there as there hasn't been in all of the investigations of Hillary. She's been scrutinized more than any politician in modern U.S. political history, and they have come up with zip, nada. I think at this point, since we're nine days away from the election, um, we're going to have to kind of prioritize things that really matter right now. I mean, Trump said a lot of bad things. Hillary's done a couple things that are very questionable. Um, many things, actually. I'm not familiar with any new investigation. I've only heard about the past ones, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> well, they just re the FBI just reopened the case yesterday on the investigation on Hillary Clinton. Do you think that that could potentially hurt the election outcome? Sure, it could, yeah. I mean, if there's any open investigation on candidates, it's kind of an issue. The Dow thing is outrageous. This close to the election, and it's quite clear the FBI director is a, a Republican, so it's an inside job in my opinion. Um, I personally think that, you know, people will see right through this. They'll see through the truth. You think they would try to impeach her? Yes, I think they'll try to do anything. Anything possible and block her, everything, every action that she wants to do. There will be cases of... She might be taken to trial, she might be sued for, for certain allegations that she has done, but I don't necessarily think that it might go through. It's become very nasty, um, um, even going back to Trump as well when he said he's not going to accept the result of the election. It's just a shambles, it's not what America's about, it's not what democracy is about. Are you going to be able to vote for Hillary Clinton? Unfortunately not, unfortunately not. I'm English, so I haven't got the uh, right to do so, but I'll be pushing other people to do so. Uh, we were on the doorstep yesterday and it's fantastic, we spoke to some people trying to convince them, some people told us early voting had already happened for them, and some people actually convinced to actually go out and early vote, so it's a fantastic day. Thank you. All right. It's you again. Yeah, I go to all the things. So are you still undecided? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so undecided, yeah. Well, has the FBI reopening the investigation on Hillary Clinton changed your mind at all? Well, I mean, I always had the same view. I mean, you know what happened with the FBI. You know why it was closed, right? Because um, uh, Bill Clinton and Loretta, Loretta Lynch met on the plane. So that's why they closed the investigation. But now uh, the um, director of the FBI, James Coney, is trying to reopen it. So, Do you think it's weird that Bill and Hillary don't really attract much crowds, yet they've gotten paid hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Clinton Foundation for giving speeches? Well, I mean, it's for those speeches, right? Those speeches are technically worth um, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Well... I guess, but nobody will even come to a free speech, barely. Um, you mean, a, oh, no one will give a, oh, true, yeah, yeah, true, uh, that's really odd, yeah, that's really odd, yeah, that's really odd. So you've been to both Hillary Clinton's rallies and Trump's rallies, who has more support from what you've seen, like, Trump? as far as crowd sizes? Trump, Trump, I mean, Trump, yeah, 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 Trump, yeah. Remember last year when that shrieking social justice warrior had a fit because her professor said that offensive Halloween costumes shouldn't be censored? I did not. Be quiet. I don't Stop. agree with that. Then, then why the f did you accept the position? It is not about creating an intellectual speech. Yeah, well, get ready because the sheer scale of triggering this year is set to be even worse. Student leaders at Tufts University sent out a letter threatening other students that if they wear, quote, costumes that appropriate cultures and reproduce stereotypes on race, gender, sexuality, immigrant or socioeconomic status, outfits relating to tragedy, controversy or acts of violence, there would be, quote, consequences for wearing an offensive costume. One of those consequences? A Tufts University police department investigation. Just got real. They're also encouraging students to report on each other for offensive costumes. Calling the police on someone for wearing a Pocahontas costume on Halloween. <sighs> this is so retarded, 
It's beyond retarded. It reminds me of those stories where people phone the police when McDonald's runs out of chicken McNuggets. It turns out you're not supposed to use 911 to call if McDonald's screws up your order. That's how retarded this is. So if there's an actual mass murderer on campus shooting up students, oh, I'm sorry, the cops are too busy dealing with the dude who dressed up like a mass murderer for a fun Halloween skit with his friends. But I guess they're only following the lead of MTV, who before Halloween last year said that parents who dress up their kids in offensive costumes should have those children seized by the CPS. And if you still want to dress up your kid like this, then Google Child Protective Services. Why not go a step further and ban the sale of those costumes so nobody can buy them in the first place? Oh wait, that's what Amazon.com is actually doing by banning sexy burka outfits and Arab men costumes because a few special snowflakes complained that they were racist. But what's this? Priest outfits are still freely available. So dear viewers, if you're planning on celebrating Halloween this year, if you're planning on dressing up, please make your costume the most tasteless, triggering shit imaginable and post photos of it all over social media. Whether it's Tranny Granny, Creepy Clowns, Kim Kardashian Heist Victim, Illegal Alien, or Trump Wall Builder, just let your imagination run wild. And make 2016 the most offensive Halloween ever. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic. The Clinton crime family machine's House of Horrors echoed with shrieks of dread over the Halloween weekend. The Hill reported former assistant FBI director James Kallstrom unloaded during a radio interview saying, The Clintons, that's a crime family, basically. It's like organized crime. I mean, the Clinton Foundation is a cesspool. This investigation was never a real investigation, Kallstrom continued. They never had a grand jury impaneled. And the reason they never had a grand jury impaneled I'm sure, is Loretta Lynch would not go along with that. Meanwhile, Loretta Lynch was fighting to save her own hijacked position of the Department of Justice, pleading the fifth to Congress on secret Iran payments, during which FBI Director James Comey's unprecedented admission of Clinton guilt 11 days before Election Day signaled that mutiny is swelling in the offices of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Zero Hedge reported, in an attempt to justify his actions, a leaked memo emerged on Friday evening courtesy of Fox News, which explains why Comey took the unusual step of deciding to inform Congress that the FBI had reopened its investigation into Clinton's private email server. The memo reveals two main arguments, a sense of obligation to lawmakers and a concern that word of the new email discovery would leak to the media and raise questions of a cover up. Sure that some of you may have heard about a letter that the FBI director uh, sent out yesterday. It's pretty strange to put something like that out with such little information right before an election. Yeah. Donald Trump is already making up lies about this. I think it's time for Donald Trump to stop fear mongering, to stop disgracing himself to stop attacking our democracy. We can't let him get away with this, can we? The Democratic Party has now transcended damage control and entered panic mode. As Hillary Clinton's right-hand woman, Huma Abedin, Muslim Brotherhood plant numero uno, is no longer on the campaign trail after it was discovered that she did not turn over all the evidence pertaining to the FBI's email investigation of Clinton. Plenty of evidence still resided on the computer Huma shared with estranged husband Anthony Weiner, a.k.a. Carlos Danger, after being investigated for sexting with a 15-year-old girl. Currently, it is surfacing that Anthony Weiner is selling out the Clintons to save his own skin, essentially voiding Huma's immunity deal, forcing Aberdeen to either face jail time or sing like a canary. It, it is unthinkable uh, that the director of the FBI would take this action lightly, that he would put this letter forth to the Congress of the United States saying that there is more information out there about classified emails uh, uh, and, and call it to the attention of the Congress unless it was something requiring serious investigation. Now the stench of boiling corruption has landed squarely on President Obama's desk. The New York Post reveals that back in 2000, 
2008, President Obama's transition team improperly emailed sensitive and confidential information about a candidate for a high-level government job, according to newly disclosed WikiLeaks emails. That, on top of the Podesta WikiLeaks, supporting Obama's knowledge and use of Clinton's email server and the Clinton team's attempts to clean it up. Eventually, the emails will reveal Clinton Foundation racketeering that will bring down all of those on the take in Washington, D.C. Hillary's bogus poll-tampered 12-point lead is gone. Unfortunately, all that means is that it's quite possible that American lives could be in more danger. Things are getting so dire for the globalists, who still remain under the false impression that they are invisible, that you can hear the clock ticking on a major false flag operation to steer the rubbernecking of the Clinton dumpster fire towards something far more sinister. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, the Clinton email scandal has exposed major corruption in Washington, D.C. Now, we already knew that there was massive corruption there, uh, but there it is in black and white. Now, the play that we're seeing really coming out of all of these email scandals is that it's the fault of those exposing the corruption, not, of course, the corrupt players that were exposed. The fact of the matter is Hillary Clinton only has herself to, pl to blame. It was her decision to set up a private email server and escape federal regulations. Mm -hmm, that's right. So what we're seeing here now is the FBI's astounding reversal to go ahead and say, we're going to go ahead and look at these emails. They've had these for weeks, Leanne. There was undue pressure on Director Comey to do this uh, internally. Even I was reading even a blog that his wife was pressuring him. He's getting a lot of bad press, thanks to us in part, because we have to hold the spotlight on him. What he did was so abhorrent, uh, saying that there was no criminality in her behavior. He's changed his mind. Uh, much to the uh, you know voices coming out against him, even in his own uh, sphere, if you will, Eric Holder being one of them, the former attorney general himself, he says, I fear he has un unintentionally and negatively affected public trust in both the Justice Department and the FBI. Well, Holder knows a thing or two about that. So before right. Comey was the uh, poster boy, boy, the golden child, because he wouldn't indict Hillary. It looks like Hillary, the latest email earthquake is going to crumble, crumble on her like a house of cards. We're watching living history right now. And the fact that Comey is doing this, uh, it's, it's astounding. But at the same time, he doesn't have any friends, Leanne. He could face indictment himself, by the way. Right, yeah, he's, it doesn't seem as though he's trying to gain the approval of people like the former Attorney General Eric Holder, which, by the way, tr he was actually majorly responsible for the erosion of trust mm -hmm. in the FBI and the Department of Justice. Let's just take a little, little history stroll through his scandals there. Obviously, there's Fast and Furious, which was the Justice Department program sent over 2,000 illegal firearms to Mexican drug cartels. This left over 300 Mexican nationals and two agents dead. Uh, he tapped AP reporters' phones, targeted James Rosen and Fox News. Uh, after the Fort Hood massacre in 2009, he called it workplace violence, not an act of terror. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they actually purged references of radical Islam from training manuals. So words like Muslim, Islam, Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas, and Sharia were not mentioned once in the FBI's counterterrorism lexicon. This meant that uh, potential future jihadists like the Sarnievs could be intervie interviewed multiple times right. by the FBI, and then they were released because they failed to find any incriminating evidence of terrorist links because they weren't properly trained. Um, okay, Eric Holder became the first and only U.S. Attorney General in American history to be held in contempt of Congress on both civil and criminal grounds. He protected rogue IRS employees after they targeted conservative groups. Uh, we we all see how he interprets the Second Amendment. Um, he refused to take action against any of the hate crimes or voting rights violations by the Black Panthers, who were targeting white voters in 2008. Rejected voter ID laws, of course. He says all the banks were too big to jail. And, of right. course, now he's working for a firm that represents those big banks. Um, you know, he's prosecuted a record number of whistleblowers. Because once again here, in this current administration, it's the people exposing corruption who are the bad guys, not the actual criminals there who are involved in the corruption. I couldn't have said that better myself. So that accurate depiction of Eric Holder, and we, you mentioned he works for Covington 
uh, Burling right now defending Wall Street clients who commit white collar crimes. That's what he does for a living currently. I remember anecdotally, just really quickly, and we're running out of time, uh, listening to his wife have a conversation about how they're buying this multi million dollar property in City Center, which is a, an upscale uh, complex in Washington, D.C. He embodies uh, the, what, everything that's wrong with our system, the revolving door. He used his position of public service to, gain, to then gain a, a position of private power, and he has no right to, cru to crucify anybody, much less to. Director Comey, but you know, talking about the Department of Justice for a moment, taking this to Lynch, you know, she is pleading the fifth. She pled the fifth regarding the Iran deal. You mentioned this earlier off camera. She's pled the fifth roughly 70 times related to Hillary Clinton's email scandal. And this woman is everything. She is literally a swamp dragon. When Trump <laughs> says drain the swamp, this is exactly who he's talking about. 30 years of this, she's been uh, doing similar things. They use this position, one of the highest offices in our land. They're, they're tasked with guarding our laws and they're exploiting them. I want to get through right. this quickly. So we've mentioned the email scandal. We've mentioned Comey and you know he could easily fall on his sword. Taking this to the email situation and Donna Brazil for a moment. Donna Brazil was just fired from CNN and she gives this ridiculous statement. Thank God it's nearly over. I've got news <laughs> for you, Dollface. It is just beginning. What you did was a crime. CNN, they never acknowledge the validity of WikiLeaks and yet they're firing people based on the validity of WikiLeaks. Uh, explain that one to me. Right. So, you know, well, she can no longer say, hey, I'm a Christian. I wouldn't lie because there it is in black and white. Your lies have been exposed. Correct. She's, thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching this show tonight. We will see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.